Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Are you ready? It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his words. Just to rest upon his promises. Just to know the says the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege to stand before you. Oh, for grace to trust you more and more and more and to trust your word. It's so sweet to trust in you, Lord. Just to take you at your word. Just to rest upon your precious promises. And to know that thus says the Lord. And tonight, Lord, as we go into your word, let my tongue be like the pen of a ready writer. Let every ear be hearing. Let every mind be open. Let every heart be receptive. We give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Shake the hands of two people around you and tell them, neighbor, I'm glad you are here. Settle down and receive all God has for you. Tonight is your night. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we're, we're shouting people, Amen. Because we have life in us. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 27, 28 to the end, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, heavy burdened. Then he says, I will give you rest. He says, come and learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is what? Light. Glory to God. Come and learn of me. Tell your neighbor, come and learn of him. You know what that tells me right away is that even Jesus was placing emphasis that except you do it God's way, there's going to be a lot of struggles. Now, you know, we've been talking about in the last uh, teachings we've been having on prosperity. Good news, right? For God's people. And I began to talk about how that God said in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even, right? Even as what? As your soul prospers. Now, that's God's design. That you prosper as your soul prospers. It's not God's design that you have a lot of money, a lot of wealth, but you are lost. What will it profit a man, he says, if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That's not true prosperity. Amen? Glory to God. And then we began by saying that there are strategies for God's prosperity. We talked about the foundation of your prosperity, which is tithing. How many of you, right? Now, how many of you have been tithing? Wave your hands to Jesus. I didn't say to me. Wave it to Jesus. I say, thank you, Lord. Amen. God never fails. Amen. And then I think it was last week we, we talked about strategy number two, which was kingdom offerings. And I told you that that one has to do with the law of sowing and reaping. Amen. Sowing and reaping. Glory to God. And today we're going to be doing the remaining two strategies. Strategy number three and strategy number four. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. So strategy number four. Number three. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Strategy number three. Glory to Jesus. Say with me, strategy number three. three. Financial strategy number three. three. Is given to the prophet. I said given to the prophet. The prophet. And when I say prophet here, that also means your man of God. The person that ministers the word of God to you. I'm telling you, God has made the ways for you to ride financially. 
and we must take the steps that he has showed us. Now, very quickly, go with me to 1 Samuel and chapter 9. 1 Samuel and chapter 9. Somebody say, give in to the prophet. Do you have a prophet in the house? Yes. Ah, praise the Lord. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 9. Here's a story about Saul before he became a king. And um, the Bible tells us in verse 1 that there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish. And describes all of that. A man of mighty, mighty man of power. Verse 2 says, and he had a son. I'm reading 1 Samuel chapter 9. Whose name was Saul, a choice man young man and a goodly and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he from his shoulders and upwards he was higher than any of the people he was tall right then verse 3 says and the asses of Kish Saul's father was lost or were lost and Kish said to his Saul his son Saul take now one of the servants with thee and arise go and seek the asses that were lost and he passed through Mount Ephraim and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and there they were not. And they passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zub, I'm reading verse 5 now, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come, and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. In other words, my father starts caring about the asses that are lost and think that we are lost. But look at what the servant said to him in verse 6. And he said unto him, Behold now. Are you there? Can we finish reading it? One to go. Behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he said cometh surely to pass. Now let us go thither. Peradventure he can show us a way that we should go. Verse 7. Want to go. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? Next verse. And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver, that will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. Amen? Did you see it? He says we cannot go to the man of God empty-handed. It's an honorable thing. It's a thing of honor. You know, I told you about your tithing and your giving. I said, when you do it, what are you doing? You are honoring God. But you have the responsibility also to honor the man of God. And the reason is very simple. That God has put a grace upon his life. That when you honor him, let me tell you, when your pastor says to you, God bless you, it's not the same God bless you as when your brothers or sisters in Christ say to you, God bless you. Are you with me? It's not the same. Because there's a grace upon his life. It's not the same. Even if he says it just like this in person. Glory to God. Isaac said to Jacob or Esau when he came to meet him he says I have blessed your, your brother and yea he shall be blessed he shall be blessed glory to God now so they went on um, let's look at that um, I want for time's sake I want to skip some of the verses and verse 11 and as they went up the hill to the city they found young maidens going out to draw water and he said unto them is a seer here? That's the prophet, right? And they answered and said, verse 12 now, He is, behold, he is before you. Make haste now, run. For he came today to the city. For there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. Now, verse 13. Everybody look at verse 13. As soon as you become into the city, are you with me? Are you with me? Somebody shout glory. You shall straight away find him. Who is him? All right. Before he go up to the high place to what? To eat. Now, let's read the rest together. I want to go. For the people will not eat until he come because he doth bless the sacrifice. And afterwards, they are eating to be bidding, right? The people will not eat before he comes because he does what? Bless. Someone say bless. bless. 
there's a blessing in his mouth. Glory to God. All right, let's look at another scripture. Uh, this time, let's go to Matthew chapter 10. A very popular scripture that you know already. Matthew chapter 10, and I'm reading from verse 40. Hallelujah. Are you there? Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. It says, he that receiveth you, receiveth me. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, who is him? Jesus, right? Now, and then he says, no, verse 40. And he that received me, received him that sent me. Now, verse 41. Everybody, verse 41, let's take it together. One to go. He that received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall what? Shall what? Shall what? Okay, and he that what? Received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive. So there is a difference between a righteous man's reward and a prophet's reward. Are you with me? It's God that designed the soul. It's God that designed the soul. Ezekiel chapter 44. Ezekiel in chapter 44. Ezekiel 44 and verse 30. Are you there? Are you with me? Now look up one minute. It says, and the first of all the first fruit of all things... And every oblation of all, of every sort of oblations, shall be what? Shall be whose? Now here, you know, we're talking about prophet, priest, is the same person right here in this situation. Shall be the priest. You shall also give unto the priest the first of what? Your due. Why? Can you finish it up with me? Want to go? That he may cause the blessing to rest in that. Is that clear? That he may cause the blessing to rest in the house. So when you don't do it, you are cheating yourself, not the prophet. That he may cause the blessing. Because you know it's impossible for you to bring a gift to the man of God, right? And he would not say some words. Am I right? That's it. Now that's how God commanded it should be. Philippians chapter 4. Let's look at the scripture. Philippians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Let's look at Paul the Apostle as an example. Philippians chapter 4. Verse 10. I'm going to read very fast from verse 10. If you, are, if you will go with me, right? Let's go very fast now. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, Paul speaking, that now at the last your care of me had flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. You didn't have the opportunity to give to me, but now you had the opportunity and you did it again. Not that I speak in response of want. Your pastor can never be in want, right? For I have learned in whatever state I am, therewith to be content. One translation says I have learned to be independent of circumstances. Independent. All right, next verse. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need, which means I can handle any situation. Next verse. I can do all things. Say with me, I can do all things. Now, through Christ, which strengthened me, verse 14, notwithstanding that I can do all things, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Now, he's talking about the need, right? Verse 15, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. You know, I told you about last week, it's about sowing and reaping, right? This one is about giving and receiving. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, 38, he says, give and it's about giving back unto you. How? Good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over to make room for more. Hallelujah. It says, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving except you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. You didn't do it once. You kept giving. Okay. It says now, not because I desire a gift. Did you see that? Not because I desire money, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. So if you're not doing it, there's fruit that's not abounding to your account. I told you that God's design is not for you to struggle financially in this world. But these are the things he has put out for you to take advantage of so you can rise. Now, in the way, the system of this world, unless you bow to them, you can't rise. You must, you must bow to them. You must compromise. You must follow their way. They will take God out of everything, right? 
But if you say it's your God, then they say, go and get it from your God. It's not what I tell you. Say, okay, go and let your God prosper you. God tells you this is how he prospers you. All right, so fruit may abound to your account. Now verse 18. But I have all, everything you have brought, and abound. I am what? Full. Having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Hello. Do you understand? Not well-pleasing to me. Well-pleasing to who? God. That's how God has designed it. On the basis of this, verse 19, but my God shall what? Supply all your need according to what? His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, many times in, 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 in church, we take Philippians 4, 19, right? Say, my God shall supply. No, this is where it begins from verse 10. <laughs> Do you understand? This is where it begins from verse 10. Based on what they have done. He says, my God. I told you, every time you give to the prophet, what happens? It releases, it releases to you. Glory to God. I'll give you a few more scriptures. I won't read them because of time. You can go and read them on your own. First Corinthians chapter 9. You read the whole of that chapter. Galatians 6, 6 to 7. Let me, let me read Galatians 6. And then Galatians chapter 6, 6 to 7. Are you ready? Are you ready? Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 to 7. Okay. Everybody look up here. See what it says. Let him that is taught in the word. Who is being taught in the word? Who is being taught in the word? Okay. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. When he says communicate there, he's not talking about be speaking English to him or speaking grammar to him. <laughs> no, communicate. And I'll show you that word communicate so you can get it. Look at the next verse. Be not deceived. Eh? God is not mocked. He can see everything. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap also. Verse 8. For he that sweareth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sweareth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's go there. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Quickly, quickly. Let me show you where that word communicate is coming from. Are you ready? Glory to God. Uh, verse 17. Are you ready? Look at it. Charge them that are rich in this world. Someone say rich. rich. Uh, what is he talking about? He's talking about money. Am I right? Yes. Is he talking about money? Yes. Or English? Money. What is he talking about? Money. money. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God which giveth us all things richly to enjoy. Now look at verse 18. Everybody, please look it up. Let's say together, one to go, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute Willing to what? Communicate. Communicate what? Substance. Next verse. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Did you see that? Communicate. Glory to God. Give. It is not, you know, this is the most, I can tell you the truth, this is one of the most difficult aspects for preachers or teachers to, to, to speak to the church. Because when they say it, you think they want it for themselves. No. They didn't call themselves. God put the rules there. God put it there. God put the pattern there. And when God puts it, let me tell you, your prosperity, you don't know how much God wants you to prosper until you start doing these things. Just do it consistently and see. Do it consistently. Give to your man of God. And see if the blessing doesn't rest upon you. God's pattern is set. You can't Add to it or remove it. We didn't ask him. When God said to, to Noah, while the earth remained, seed time and harvest shall not cease, right? That's his own decision. That's how it works. Look, in the sacrifice, he said, for instance, that when they're going to offer an animal, it must be a year old, male of the first year. Am I right? Okay. So without blemish, do you all remember that? Of the first year. One year old. Somebody say one year old. Yeah. Now, it says when you take the blood of that animal and you, the high priest, pours it, he says it will only cover for one year. So every year, you must bring a fresh one to, because that other one has expired. It doesn't last more than one year. So, as it were, the age of the animal determines how long it covers. Now, if you decided that because you are smart... You now take a two-year-old, right? You say, God, I want it to cover for two years. And you apply it. Will it work? 
Now, Sammy, will it work? No. No. Every year, once a year, the high priest had to enter there without blood. But when Jesus came, the Bible says he lives after the power of an endless life. Are you with me? And he's alive forevermore. So his blood is covering you how? Perpetually. Forever. Someone say forever. forever. That's what he did. But you can't come and say, okay, it, let me be smart about it. This is what I'm going to do. I don't want to be doing this all the time, right? Let's just do it this way. No, that's what God says. So when he tells you to do this, it's for your lifting. Tell your neighbor, I hear. I hear. Say one more time. Say, I hear. I hear. Glory to God. All right. Now let's go to strategy number, number what? Okay, so number one is what? The tithe, right? Number two is what? Kingdom of friends. Number three is what? So it's like some, if I don't hear your voice, it means you are not giving. No, number one is what? Number two is what? Number three is what? And number four is what? Okay, that's where we are. <laughs> Glory. Glory to God. All right, so number four, are you ready? Strategy number four, which is the final strategy we're taking tonight, is giving to the poor. Somebody say giving to the poor. Oh, glory to God. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, it says, when you give to the poor, you lend unto God. Amen? When you give to the poor, you lend unto God. Jesus, speaking in Matthew chapter 25, says, I was sick, you didn't visit me. I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was naked, you didn't clothe me, right? They say, Master, when did we see you like this? He said, as much as you have not done it to any of these, mar- these ones, right? You have not done it to me. You have not done it to me. Giving to the poor is one of God's greatest strategies to bless you. Amen? Glory to God. Let's look at the scripture. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Psalm 41. Psalm 41. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Psalm 41. Verse 1, we're going to read from verse 1 to 3. And you're going to see what God says concerning giving to the poor. Are you ready? Psalm 41, verse 1 to 3. Let's read it one to go. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Stop. Can God lie? Ah. Now, you can now understand why some people are not Christians. Are you with me? But they escape so many troubles. This is what they are writing on. Because the scriptures can't be broken. This is what they do. This is what they do. You hear of wealthy persons, you know, that you know they're not born again, right? But go and check out. Many of them are just giving to the poor. They are fine. And this scripture is holding them. Now, it's not going to take them to heaven. We talked about Cornelius the last time. Cornelius wasn't born again. But God says your prayer and your arms giving, your giving has ascended to God, to heaven. So because it has ascended, God now says, send for Peter. He will tell you words with which you'll be saved. Uh, just by this. Now, it says, blessed is he that considered the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Verse 2. Verse 2. Let's read together. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And that will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. Can you see that? Just because he's giving to the poor. He says God is not willing to do away with a giver. Because he's functioning on the earth doing what God wants. He will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. So all these ones that somebody is running saying my enemies are pursuing you. You don't need to. If you are a giver to the poor, you are taking care of it. Amen. Say I hear. Now verse 3. Let's read it together. Everyone want to go. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. That will make all his bed in his sickness. When God becomes your nurse in the hospital, what happens to you? I say when God becomes your nurse, he is making your bed. God comes God comes to you where you are ill and he's making your bed. You are well, isn't that correct? Why? Because God is not willing to do away with you. He can't afford to lose you. Give in to the poor. Oh, hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6. Look at what it says. We read it earlier on, but I want us to finish it. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 
Verse 9. Verse 9. It says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Don't get tired of doing good. Because in due season, you will what? Reap. If you faint not. Now, some people are already fainting. Some people have to say, look, I'm just tired. All this give, give. At the point where they're about to reap, they give up. Now, if you've planted and you've watered your, your, the thing you planted, and it's getting ready, and it's just about to give you harvest, and you say, look, I'm tired of coming here every day, and you walk away, what will happen to the harvest? It will perish. Some people's harvest, they've just walked away from it. He says, if you faint not, verse 10, uh, and let us, uh, as we have therefore opportunity, somebody say opportunity. That's what it is. As we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Which is the household of faith? Children of God. Do good to all men. Do you understand it? He said, but especially. When you see your brother having need, I mean, you have, you have, you have four cars in your house, and you, you only use two. And then you have your brothers and sisters who don't have a car. You see them struggling to get to church. And then that's your car. You are worshiping it. After a while, <laughs> even if it was the latest model, right, it will soon become old model. Don't wait till something is spoiled before you give it out. You know, there are some people, they will not give out anything until it's spoiled. That is, they will buy, you know, you, they will buy clothes and clothes. The wardrobe can be from that end to that end, right? Now, anything, let me tell you, any cloth you, did, you have not worn in six months, you don't need it. Six months, six months. Any cloth you didn't wear in six months is not necessary. Now, they will have all of that. Bags, everything, shoes. They won't give it out. They will just be admiring. They will even be cleaning it every week, be dusting it. But once they see that maybe it's, 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 getting, it's deteriorating, it's changing color, it's fading, ah, then they're looking for who to give that one to. No, don't be like that. You know, he says God is not deceived. What you sow, you will reap. If you give people stained bags, you will harvest <laughs> something that is stained. I'm telling you. Some persons, for instance, they want to give out a shoe. They will wear it, wear it, wear the shoe. So wear the shoe, wear the shoe till the shoe, the, the, the topology of the shoe changes. <laughs> it so changes that even as they are going, dogs that are going there will be barking. <laughs> hoo, hoo, hoo. Something's wrong. <laughs> and that's the one they want to give out. No. You know, we talk, for instance, you can't come here to God and you want to give God um, uh, money and you look for the squeezed money and no, you honor God with it. So give it out when it's good. Don't give it out because you can't wear it anymore, you can't use it. No, it's, it's not good. That's not a gift. Glory to God. He says, you, you can't see your brother in need, you know, and then you say to him, go. go let me show it to you. Let's read it. James. <laughs> James, are you ready? Um, let's read James in chapter 2. Glory to God. Say I'm a giver. Say I'm a sower. Okay, James in chapter 2. Let me read from verse uh, 14. <laughs> Are you there? What does it profit, my brethren? Do a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Can faith save him? Next verse. If a brother or sister be naked or destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, Bro, sis, depart in peace. Be warm. Be filled. In his clothes, you are speaking, be warmed. And you have clothes in the house. In his food, you are saying to him, now you are hungry, now receive, be filled. <laughs> Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Next verse. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. Let me tell you, these are the avenues that God has created for your wealth. I told you last week about securing the future generations. Do you understand? Train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. They will never be poor. Your children will never. This coming generation is a takeover generation. I'm telling you. Imagine they are, they are learning everything that they need to learn. They are exercising themselves. And then with covenant practices, they will be ahead. The Bible says that they will speak with the enemy at the gate. They will confront the enemy. They will confront the enemy. 
When you come to intelligence, you know, they will, they will stand out. When it comes to spirituality, they will stand out. Glory to God. That's why he says, train them up. Train them up like, like, uh, like Isaac trained up his son. And Abraham trained them up. So much that he calls God. You remember what I said? He calls God the fear of Isaac. Glory to God. So he says, even so, without works is dead. When you give to the poor, he says you are lending to God. Make it a habit, you see, because God will give back to you. And God never gives you the same. You can never outgive God. You can never, never, never outgive God. Believe me, all these things we have said to you, this is what God has designed for your escape from the corruption that is in the world. In this world, look, if you start making progress, there's a point you will get to. They will tell you for you to cross to the next level, we need to see. That's why you find that when they come in a room like this of, of the big, big guys they meet, people that don't personally know themselves, when they meet, they know what they belong to, what clubs, what you know, groupings they belong to behind the scene. They know what they do. Because the devil said now, he said to Jesus, bow, and I'll give. He says, all of this, the kingdom and the glory has been delivered unto me. I give it to whomsoever I will. Anybody who bows before me, I'll give it to him. He must bow to get my own. So if you're not going to bow to get it, how do you get it? You have to go to God. When you come to God, he tells you, this is it. My yoke is easy. My burden is what? Light. He says, you'll find a rest, financial rest for your soul. Now, when you do this, look at what he says. I'll show you this, what God says. When you, when you do this, so, so we, we, the first one is Titan, right? That's the foundation. That's where it begins from. If you don't start with Titan, don't dance around it. Then you give to the kingdom. Then you give to the prophet, right? And then you give to who? The poor. Now, Proverbs chapter 11. Because someone says, ah, if I give, give, give all of these things, then which one? Proverbs chapter 11. Are you there? Proverbs chapter 11. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. Let's look at what God says in verse 24. And I want all of us to read it and say it out together. Proverbs 11 verse 24. Are you ready? All right, let's say it together. I want to go. There is that scattered and what? And yet increase it. And there is that withhold it more than is meat, but it tends to poverty. That's the scripture. That's the scripture. When you scatter according to God's word, it says you will increase. Because God will multiply your seed soon. Now, if your seed is zero, God will still multiply it. But you and I know that anything times zero is what? That's what it is. It will still multiply, but it's zero, and you end up with zero. There is a scatter rate, and yet increase it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. We read that at the beginning of our discourse. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. It says, when you give this way. And let me read from verse, from verse 7. Every man, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Right? Is that right? Then he says, and, you know that means it's a continuation, am I correct? And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Someone say all grace. All grace. He says that you always, not sometimes, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. All grace. Do you know that this year has been declared as your year of double honor, right? There's a, there are graces required to make it happen for you. Are you with me? There are graces required to make it happen for you. And when you give like this, it says God has the ability to call all those graces together to work in your favor so that you can experience double honor. In that Psalm, Isaiah chapter, which we read, where the double honor prophecy came from, it says that strangers, strangers will be your what? Your vine dressers, your plowmen, strangers. Someone say strangers. strangers. You have been used to people giving you favor and helping you, people that know you your relations, your friends. This time, people that don't know you will be helping you. That's what it means. You understand? People that don't know you from anywhere. Glory to God. All grace. Somebody say all grace. All grace. Abound towards you. All grace. Do you know there's a grace responsible for speed? Hello? I said, do you know there's a grace responsible for speed? That what you should have accomplished in three years by this June is done. Who is going to make that happen? God. There's a grace responsible for favor. 
That means when your name appears, they just have to favor you. Are you with me? When they see a document with your name on it, they just have to, they don't know you, they, don't, they just have to favor you. Amen. And that's what's happening for you, amen? amen? You know the story of Esther? Esther, the Bible says Esther found favor with everyone. From, from the moment she came in, she began to find favor with every single person, up to the king. Now she knew she found favor, so that when she went to the king, every time she would say to him, if I have found favor in your sight, do this for me, and he will do it. She will come again. The king says, I've done that for you. You have come again. She said, yes. If I have found favor on your side, do this. He will do it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. That you will just be favored. They don't have a choice. But they will favor you in everything. Glory to God. That will be your testimony. I said that will be your testimony. He says, I will give these people favor in the sight of Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you will not go empty. I said you will not go empty. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. David was not the firstborn. He was the last, number eight. Eh? Number eight. Yet, God chose him to be the king. He says, because he liked me. He said, God liked me. Glory to God. That's favor. Amen? Even Nehemiah. Nehemiah prayed to God. He said, Lord, let me find mercy and favor in the sight of this man. He's talking about his boss. He went to his boss and says, he was looking sad. The boss says, why are you looking so sad? He said, well, you know, my, my father's house, my land is destroyed. I need permission to go. Do you know the queen was by the side of the king? The only question is, how long do you want to go for? He says, so and such a time. He said, okay. Then he says one more thing. He says, I, I want command to be given that, you know, resources should be given to me as I go. The king says, it's done. Somebody say favor. Amen. Some of you don't understand that when you start doing this, when you go to your boss, you say, I want to be closing from work on service day, one hour before the time. He will say, why not? It's done. Glory to God. He says, what? It's done. This is it. Glory to God. Favor. I said favor. So there's a grace for favor. There's a grace for restoration. Not just restoration of years. He says, I will restore to you the years. The years. Not the things. The years. Are you with me? You know what it means? That means you, 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 you are, there are two people standing here, right? And then you begin together. Then this man is moving, 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 moving. And, and some things are happening. You are, you are stagnated. Now, if things start happening for you, yes, those things have been restored to you, but not the years, because this person is ahead of you. But when God restores the years, you know what happens? You not only catch up, you can overtake. Amen. Are you with me? A woman left her land. Elijah, the prophet, told her, because she was a giver, that, look, there'll be famine in this land. Leave this place for seven years. And by the time she came back, they had taken her land, her property. She cried to the king. God made sure at that time, the king was listening to a story from Gehazi concerning the woman. He says, that's the woman. And what did the king do? The Bible says he appointed a certain officer that they should restore her land and all the fruits from the day she left till this time. That's restoration. Amen. You understand? Hannah was always going, you know, and crying and crying. Penina was troubling her. Troubling her. But when God was going to restore her, when God was going to restore her, you remember her story in, in Isaiah 1 Samuel chapter 2. Six. Within a short space, six. She overtook. Somebody say overtook. That's it. Now how? He says all grace. Somebody say all grace. God is faithful. God is faithful to his word. God can never cheat you. Believe me, when he tells you something to do, he says, if they will obey and serve him, they will spend their days in what? In prosperity and their years in pleasure. If, if they will be obedient to do this thing, how can God give you an instruction that, that is to your disadvantage? When you are working for his kingdom. You're working for his kingdom. Hallelujah. He told uh, Saul, he says, when you are departed from me, he says, you will see on the way three men, they will give you. They will give you. Not your relations. From today, people will start giving you. Amen? Amen. As you key into this thing and you start doing it, you'll be amazed at the blessings if you come from everywhere. I don't mean people you know. You know not people that someone is pitching you say, oh, uh, you know, I've known you for... They don't know you, but they just feel they have to favor you. Amen. Right? They'll be speaking favorably concerning you where it matters. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. The guy that spoke for Joseph before Pharaoh. Is he his relation? No. But favor was working. 
Favor was working in his life. And he spoke, glory to God. And the rest was his testimony. That would be your testimony. Amen. I said, that would be your testimony. Amen. Glory to God. In closing, God's word is eternally sure. God's word is eternally true. Your level of trust in God is a reflection of your giving. Amen? He says, don't trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us all things richly to enjoy. This is your season. This is your hour. Say I'm prosperous. Say I'm a giver. I can never lack. God's word is true. It's working for me. Because I give, it is given back to me. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over to make room for more. Men and women, boys and girls, will give back into my bosom. Because God said so. Thank you, Father, that it is so for me. In Jesus' name. Well, put your hands together for the Lord.